Handling the camera today is Chef Robert. Hey, Mr. Robert. How are you guys today? All right. And this is Chef Kyle. How you doing? He's my sous chef. And uh, Kyle and I spent yesterday doing most of the prep for today's recipe, which is, and hi, people are showing up. The recipe is uh, crispy chicken skin nachos with pork. Now that whole with pork thing is about five hours long. That's what that whole with pork means. Um, and we prepared it yesterday, so I'm not going to show you live how we did that, but come on over here. I do have um, a slideshow that I can put together. I'm gonna All right, so Makes I it guess exciting. I can't, I, I'm going to show, I'm going to run through the pictures and show you the pictures. You won't hear anything, and then I'll tell you the recipe, okay? That's what we'll do. Here's the pork butt. And you saw that for like the last five minutes. So this is the sofrito that we made. And a sofrito is a, uh, it's a base for sauces in Italian, Portuguese, Latin cooking. And it's basically onions and peppers and garlic and uh, any other aromatic vegetables. And you basically saute them in butter and then you, you turn them into a sauce. You know, you, you blend them. And it makes a really good, really good base. And to that, we added a bunch of stuff. So Here's what we added to the sofrito. We added a cup of, uh, oh, well, did you see the, look at these uh, peppers here. These peppers were reconstituted. Those are guajillo peppers, and they were dried. You buy them dried. Uh, Chef Kyle reconstituted them. He uh, took out the seeds, and we took two of them, and we added it to the sofrito. So this is going to cover the pork. That's why I'm talking about it. So. To that, we added one cup of fresh cilantro, a cup of fresh mint, a cup of fresh parsley, about 10 cloves of garlic, a small yellow onion. I know he actually added about two, but he didn't understand the whole uh, carb thing with onions. So you're going to add about one small yellow onion, about four tablespoons of cumin, and a quarter cup of chili powder. It turns out we added that after the fact because we found that the heat from the guajillo peppers just dissipated. Once it cooked down, there was like no heat left. So I wanted to get that real chili flavor, so I added some chili powder. Uh, we squeezed two limes into there for the juice, a quarter of a cup of olive oil, about a tablespoon of swerve, and we used that because it, the, it needed a little sweet just to offset all that spice. About four tablespoons of salt. It, was, it became really salty, when, not over salty, but it wasn't salty enough when we started. And you're going to need a cup of chicken stock. So how we did the pork was first we covered the pork in a, in a roasting pan with sofrito. And this is what it looks like. OK, pretty simple there. If you're going to use uh, do this at home, you're probably going to use a Dutch oven, like a cast iron Dutch oven. That's what I use at home. Um, so then you want to cover and cook it. And if you're in a, using a Dutch oven, you just you know, put the cover on it and cook it. And it cooks at a low temperature, 275, 250, for about five hours. And that, when you keep it, all the, the lid on it, it keeps it locked in and everything is just, it just falls apart. So what we did is then we took that, uh, cooled it off, and then refrigerated it. So here's what it looks like. Here's what it looked like this morning. So that came out of the refrigerator. And then I chopped the pork, right? So I chopped it all up. And then what's wonderful about using a sofrito or any kind of sauce or any kind of um, you know, preparation for, for cooking, uh, slow cooking meats like this, is that you just sort of blend it all together, right? You take all that juice and all that sofrito and all the fat that renders out of the pork and you mix it with the chopped pork. And that's what we have over here. So take a look at this. We ended up with, you know, chunks. Look at that. Just get a real good close up. I know it's almost, you know what? It's just delicious looking. And you can see the, the chunks of fat in there and the sofrito, and it all just sort of melds together and uh, makes it really happy. Get out of here, George. <laughs> okay. So now let's talk about the chicken skins. How I made the chicken skins, and I'll show you this as well, is that 
first I made a sheet of bacon. And when I say a sheet, I mean I did it in the oven at about 300 degrees. I got a cookie sheet. You get a uh, parchment paper down on it, put the bacon on that. And then I put another piece of parchment over it. And this is important because I want bacon grease to get on both of those pieces of parchment. And Richard Morris actually tipped me off to this uh, tip with his salmon bacon, his salmon skin. It's great, great technique. Then you put another cookie sheet on top of that and weigh it down, and then you bake it. So you end up with really flat, really delicious bacon. But that's not what the chicken skins are. I took the bacon off, then I put the chicken skins down. So I'm going to show you a couple of pictures. Here's the bacon. All right, and here's the chicken skins on the newly bacon fat covered Okay, newly fat, bacon fat covered parchment. And then uh, essentially do the same treatment to those and when they come out, I guess I don't have a picture of them. I guess we'll have to take them out of the oven, shall we? So these, uh, I, just, I just reheated them a little bit, but look at that. These things are just crispy. I'm gonna eat one, ready? Mmm, we have bacon flavor, they're crispy, they're crunchy. They have that chicken skin flavor. Oh, Robert wants one too. Mmm. <laughs> Faked ya. Yeah, you can leave those right here. Oh my gosh. Aren't those good? That's not what I thought it, that is. Yeah, yeah, you don't think of it that way. And when they first come out of the oven, like we warmed them up a little, they might be a little soft, but just let them sit for a minute and they'll get crispy. Now. For the nachos, to put all this together, I'm going to heat up the pork, and I'm also going to make, yes, a cheese sauce with sodium tricitrate. Because, you know, after the queso, I figured I, I'm not done with cheese sauce food. i got to do some more cheese sauce food, and what better than nachos, right? So for those who didn't see it, this is the stuff that we make the cheese sauce with, citrus. That's just a brand. I don't even think I can get this brand anymore, but you can go on Amazon and get trisodium citrate or just sodium citr citrate or citrate. And it's just a powder. It's just a white powder. It looks like salt or sugar. That's it. Yeah. So I'm going to do two things. First, I'm going to warm up some of this pork. So yeah, come on over here. Just going to get this pan a little bit hot. Warm up some of this pork for the nachos. Of course, you know, this is four pounds of, you know, three and a half pounds of pork. We're not going to put it all on the nachos. And the other thing I have is this dish with a half a cup, a pan with a half a cup of water in it and about a teaspoon of sodium citrate. So now what I do is I'm going to bring that up to a boil and I've got two kinds of cheese here. Now, for nachos, I went with smoked cheddar, right, and pepper jack. Now, smoked cheddar because I want the smoky flavor, you know, for the nachos. And pepper jack because, if you recall in the queso, when we did the queso, um, that we added these fresh vegetables and it kind of fell apart. So Carl, I figured I would get some cheese that has the flavor already in it that I wanted. Carl, I have a question for you. Yeah, yeah. Are you bringing that water to a boil yes. with the, um, the stuff in first? Yes. You bring the water to a boil first, and then as soon as the cheese goes in, you bring it down to low, to low heat. And you sort of mix all this together. And what this sodium citrate does, if you haven't seen my shows already, is it, is it turns it into like Velveeta. It turns it into a cheese sauce. And this is perfect for nachos. And the more water you use, the, you know, the more water to sodium citrate that you use, the thinner it is. So I used a little more water than I did last time because this is nacho cheese. It's going to have to drizzle, drizzle a little bit. Now this pork has that taco meat flavor with all the fat of pork butt, 
right? Look at that. Just can you can you imagine what that tastes like? It tastes so stinking good. Now, once the cheese sauce starts to emulsify, you can just sort of take it off the heat because it's done its job, right? The heat has done its job. The sodium citrate has done its job. Yeah, look at this. Look at that. Ooey gooey, lovely. So I'm going to take that off the heat. And just before serving, I'll warm it up again. This pork is just to die for. And it isn't going to overwhelm the flavor of the cheese or the chicken skins. That's the best part about it. You know, it's not going to, it doesn't have like such a sharp flavor. Like if it was smoky, if it was like smoked pork butt or, you know, it, would, it might be a little too strong, but it's going to fit in really, really nicely. Okay, I think we're ready. So let's start plating. Yeah. Let me come around this side. I've got a, uh, I've got a bowl here. And we've, we're going to put down our chicken skins. Got some big ones. And by the way, I've been fasted for two days. So after this show, I'm going to be chowing down. <laughs> I'm actually not really hungry. That's what happens. All right, so you got, you know, you don't need a whole lot of these, but that, that looks pretty good. All right, now the next thing I'm going to put on this is cheese sauce. Pull the pan over. Yep, I'll pull the pan over. That'd be great. Thank you, Robert. And like I said, if, it, if it's been off the heat too long, don't worry. Just heat it up a little bit more. I'll use one of these. Yep, thank you. Now, the reason I'm putting the cheese on first is because this allows the pork to stick to it, right? Plus, you don't want to just cover up that beautiful pork if you're thinking of a presentation. You don't want to just cover up that beautiful pork with cheese. Look at this. Oh, oh man, thank you. I think we should do another layer of chicken skin. Bacon. You think so? Oh, absolutely. Okay, let's do it. Robert says Hook enough. it up. That's why you're the, the big chef. Another layer of chicken skin, Robert says. I would okay. try to build them now on the outside, too. Yeah, let's build it. Oh, yeah, I, I see what you're saying. And, yes, I didn't wash my hands. That's okay, because this is just a show. This you're eating it anyways. And I'm eating it, so this is not like, you know... Okay, here we go. Some pork on top of that. You know, leave the holes so you can see everything. Isn't that amazing? Now, Robert, I know what you're thinking. <laughs> you want some more cheese okay, on top of that, right? Let's get some more cheese. <laughs> All right, some more cheese. I'll just use this. Do a little crisp action, a little drizzle action. All right. Now, what you do next is completely up to you. What we have decided to do is put some fresh tomatoes on there, and some fresh chopped tomatoes, because these are nachos, right? Now I got tricolor peppers, or capsicum, as my Australian friend calls it. Now you can see it's beginning to get a little more colorful. Plus, you can tell your sugar burner friends it's mango, and they'll be all disappointed when it's not sweet. And if you like raw onion, you know, that's okay. A little bit is okay. You don't want to go nuts with that. Now I've got some jalapeno. I love jalapeno because I love heat. Spice it up. Spice it up. Finally, I'm going to, well, now I've got a crema. Now, a crema, uh, if you listen to Two Keto Dudes, I, ha I did a recipe for this. It's essentially sour cream and lime juice 
Chef Kyle prepared this for me today. Watch this. Oh, that's ugly. But it looked, but it's going to taste good. I promise. I should have let a real chef do that. All right, and finally, some cilantro. Cilantro, a wonderful addition to any Tex Mex, Mexican, Spanish dish. And there, there it is. What do you think? What do you think, huh? Mm, should I try one? I think I should. You guys want to try one? I think you do too. Oh my gosh. All right, look at this. Mm. Oh my God. This is like comfort food. Of course, nachos are comfort food. The difference is, these ones won't give you a heart attack, diabetes, fatty liver disease, or, or any of those other diseases of civilization. This you is know healthy food. Did you eat the whole ball on camera? What do you think? I think it's great. And I think that the chips don't get soggy. No. So no. they hold up very well. Yeah. Yeah. And this is like just good food. It's not just keto food. It's just good food. I think you're gonna, people are gonna sit and watch me eat this whole bowl with you guys. Mmm. We have any questions? Yeah. Let's take some questions. While those guys finish my nacho. Oh. Becky, why not put it all on the nachos? <laughs> you were thinking the same thing. That spoon is not big enough. All right, Becky. Just for you. You ready? Let's just put a pool of cheese sauce down there for dipping. Yeah, I know it. There you go. Is that good? Take a look at that. Is that enough cheese for you, Becky? This is like a whole meal here. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God, so good. All right, amazing, where's mine? Hi there. How long did you bake the skin in temperature? Yes, okay, that's a good question because I didn't say that. First of all, this recipe is at nachos.2keto.com. The chicken skin I cooked for about 25 minutes at 300 and you can f you can do them for a half an hour you can do them for 35 minutes I've never seen anybody operate a camera and everybody's <laughs> hearing you chew too that's really great <laughs> I'm sorry guys this is fucking <laughs> <laughs> it's really I'm overwhelmed <laughs> really really good uh, yeah so three three what did I say 350 25 minutes something like that 300 25 minutes they, it just doesn't take that long. And I also put brick, bricks on top of the top pan just to weigh down the skins. All right, guys, that's it. Uh, if you like this and you want to support Richard, what Richard Morris and I do, go to patreon.2keto.com and make a donation because guess what? That's our retirement fund. Hmm. Thanks. Thanks, guys. <laughs>